So when did you first know that there was these, that these protests were happening and something was really changing? Uh, well, I, because I have a brother, a young brother in Iran who was born when I, when I was 15, 14. Mm -hmm. So I, I raised him up and he feels like my own, my own son. Sure. He, he's in Iran. So he, uh, uh, like because of him, like I, I followed the regime uh, that the, the followed what's happening in Iran. I, I'm, I'm never going back to Iran, obviously, but, uh, because of that, I'm just following it back on what was, what's happening there. And it see it, it really started the current moral revolution that's that's going on, and I will give you uh, why I think there's a moral revolution later. That there was one girl back in 2020, I think it was 2019, 2020, who alone. And this wasn't a protest. This was it was a normal day in Tehran, in like a square somewhere. And she, if, if you search uh, a girl of Engelop, Engelop Street, E N G H E N G H L E L A B Street, you will see there's one girl who got on the top of a, like a uh, electricity uh, generator. I'm not sure right, electricity uh, power, and and like a, like a, like a f five foot five foot up height, and and took her uh, scarf and put it on a stake, on a, on a, on a, on a, and 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 what and she just stand, she stood there. And someone took a picture of her and she became an icon mm -hmm. to the extent there were other girls, uh, uh, other girls doing the same to the extent that they, all of those like power generator things that, that are had in the city, probably they control the power uh, grids. They, they like put wires on it. something that you can't go on top of it anymore. And then they, uh, that's, 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 it's really the carnival revolution. I don't think would have been part, would have been come so soon. Uh, without that one girl who chose to go like alone with no agenda, she was just fed up and she put her. Uh, Did anything on. happen to her? Do we know if anything happened to her? Um, they were searching for her for years, and later they got her. And she's in prison, right? She's now. in prison. Oh God. So, um, so you th so that's when it kind of started, or that's when it came in kind of kind of consciousness. People started to pay attention. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about how. So you were following it, and and when did you notice that this time it was different? Uh, when I saw that, well, so it was pretty sudden. It, it was like I, that happened, and there were probably people like people's consciousness, but it was very sudden after the death of a uh, killing of Masa Amini mm -hmm. in Iran. Uh, you you explained the situation, the the, the story. I'll just say quickly that, mm -hmm. like, she was just minding her own business. And the morality police. So, I have I have I have uh, I have I have uh, recollections of morality police, of uh, how, how it looks like. But morality police is like, you're not you're not wearing your hijab properly. You're like you're like you're showing your wrists. Like you sh you shouldn't that like, should show, show shouldn't show your wrists. They should be covered. Yep. Then like get in the van. You know. Like, and they if you don't get in the van, like they will like bring leashes to you and like pull you to the van and take you to the. Uh, to uh to the police station to like teach you to re-educate re you there has been cases of uh someone uh, or a family of my uh friend who uh, she was like a 35 year old woman and because of her hair was showing they put her in the van and said read all of these pamphlets gave the pamphlets to her it's like i'm not going to read this pamphlet the pamphlets are about like how hijab is important and you should cover yourselves and how to yeah, properly yeah. cover yourself it's like i'm not reading this and they said we're going to take a test. And if you don't pass that test, we're not letting you out of this van. We don't care. Like we're going to keep you here all night. So, uh, yeah, so they, something similar probably happened to Asamini as well. And there are ambiguity because you know, the dictatorship and the free flow of information is, and there's no journalism. Sure. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened, but she happened to die. Uh, some people are saying that if someone saw her, saw the, the, beating her head on the on the pavement. So someone says, "No, it's okay." We don't know exactly what happened, but she died, and it, she died in police custody because because of that. Mm -hmm. And um, there was at that point, people in Iran looked at themselves, like especially men, looked at themselves like we have been our lives agents of morality police ourselves. 
like one morality police cannot force like 80 million people to like follow these rules. We have been enforcing these on cell onto our sisters, onto our wives, onto our mothers ourselves. And there was a real, real moral reckoning, real at that at that. And, and this is okay, we're not talking about a free society when free exchange of ideas and forums and debates can have no. It's like in absolute death silence dictatorship. There was within each individual person a moral reckoning they had. Are we on the side of morality police or are we on inside of them? And like when we see like this, you, you has been like seeing these videos that, of women burning their hijab and the, the uh, men clapping for them. I mean, there has been things like, on, like for example, I guess to say this, my friend's sister, she like, was telling us that when, whenever she was, she went to work at night. So when she was coming back at night and there were always men, even though she was like dressed properly, yeah. uh, men, there were always like, oh, you pretty lady, you know, yeah, do you want to get on the car? We can give you a ride back home. Like they were like, they're harassing her, like normal people. And that used to be like commonplace. But after Masa Zamini's death, they, they don't see that anymore. Like they're not harassing women. Normal people. Men stop harassing. harassing women. They stopped it because there was a real moral reckoning. It's like, on whose side are we? Like, and it has been like, I also need to say this other story. Um, uh, one of my friends, she had a sister in Iran. Uh, her name is Ava. And, and I'm giving, I'm, I'm covering the real name. So, uh, so their, their identity will be sure. saved. Uh, she was, she, like, there, there are, there were, um, because theater in, in Iran basically almost completely banned. And uh, so there was a private theater somewhere and it was like hidden. And they, if, the, if the police gets to them, they will like jail all of them. But there was a play going on somewhere hidden. And when they, they entered the, the hidden hidden basement of somewhere, so she was selling her, like, she couldn't believe this was Iran. Like, like men were, like, the women were totally comfortable. Men were not harassing them at all. And they like they were like the girlfriends, boyfriends were like kissing and holding their each other's hands, and like this is totally self-started. So again, this is, we we don't have in Iran anyone who like tells us no, you should be this way, you should be that way. Like shame on you. Like every person really did a moral reckoning onto himself, and and the same person, the same uh, girl, she was in a so in, in coffee shops you also need to in even in private property in stores you need to keep your hijab if you don't there's like morality police going on and they like close the business yep. because of that so that's why the business owners are forced to enforce hijab laws even if they don't agree with it as well and ava she went to the to co her coffee place and she took away her hijab and just put it there and she was studying and usually what happens is a store owner says like please put it on, we're gonna close my business. And this time they said, thank you. You don't have to pay for your coffee. Wow. Your coffee is on us wow. and we are on your side. Like how beautiful and amazing it is. is it like mor moral revolutions are completely real and they can happen at very sudden, suddenly. And it could happen even under dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think we're seeing that in Iran. I think you're absolutely right. It is a moral revolution, and uh, and we're seeing it. So, uh, from what you're hearing from Iran, the demonstrations continuing is, and what, and what do they want? What, what? I mean, is this just about a hijab, or is this uh, about the morality of relationships, or is this something broader? They want the Islamic government gone. Yeah, they want a secular government. And that's not some of some of them are saying that, or some of them are saying no. We just want morality police. We got, no, like it's a un, unif, Everyone is unified on oh. this one issue that we, they want the regime gone. And, they and want it's a the, normal regime. They want a normal regime, which they yeah. do they have a sense of what that means, or do they have a positive vision, or is it mostly just this they don't want? They want something like Europe. Europe is a big ideal for Iran. Mm -hmm. So they want they they want to be able to vote. They want to be able yes. to uh, and and they want to be able to what was it? They want to be able to live what we consider a normal life. That is a a life where you can make choices for yourself. You can interact with whoever you want to interact. You, you don't have to ask permission uh, to hug somebody. 
Um, so that, so that's, that's across the board. That's what people out in the streets want. Yes. Yes. And that's unequivocal. And to what extent do religious people, let's say your parents support that? Uh, there has been also a moral revolution within my parents and they're not religious okay. anymore. My mother who had the hardest time getting one strand of her show, not because of morality, but because she couldn't get herself to do it. Yeah. She's, she's now, uh, again at the age of 40 something like it's hard to change at that age but the yeah. force of this remote awakening is so sweeping that even her she, she changed her beliefs and they're, they're now calling me and telling me you were right all along these years we were wrong wow so that, that's, that's it's pretty hard amazing. for older people especially parents to say that yeah absolutely absolutely so uh, and how how extensive do you think this is with an Iranian society? That is, uh, is this just in the cities, in the in the big cities, among more educated people, or is this uh, is this more widespread? The protests are going on everywhere. It's erupting everywhere, and even even probably at the same rate. But if if I have to pick, I would say it's probably more with uh, outside the cities, in the smaller cities, in the smaller huh. towns, and all over Europe. Really. Okay. So, I, so I mean, I, I know you you're not a procrastinator of the future, but you know, if you had to give uh, if you had to give a timeline for how long this regime lasts, do, do you think it can last? Do you think uh, do you think this is this is the end? It's just a matter of time, um, weeks, months. Uh, that completely depends on people's free will. If well, always yes, they but... could they could. But why, why that? I mean. They could let it go, let this moment of world reckoning go and say, oh, well, there were those were ideals. Let's come back to reality. Mm -hmm. Or they could just like not like say the obvious and keep keep on yearning for your normal life and not be adjusted to the abnormal life that is going on there. I mean, that's, I mean, there's scenes like yeah, this, I'm not making these up. Like, sure. my, my friend was in Iran like that type's happening. It was like a. 18 year old boy standing with like a baseball like racket like baseball uh, it's like yeah. why are you afraid like i'm gonna sit down and defend myself yeah like, why are you going away and and like women who like in front of the police like even though they there's this huge like incredible amount of work. my friend in iran like he saw first like in front of his eyes one of the girls like, were killed like she was bashed on the head so hard that she like died like she died like that. that's like and her, her image was uh, was spread around as another uh, victim of the Iranian government uh, again this is not we're not talking about normal like protests and like some some reprimation on the edges these are really blood hungry people bloodthirsty people and uh, uh, that's that's what happens I mean that's what happens with religion and strong, strong ideology when states, uh, becomes religious. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.